Hello and welcome to the Hot Corner Live Strategy Session. I am your host, as always, Steve Straza, Director of Research here at All Star Charts. We do this every week at one o'clock. This is really my time to uh, give a little bit of information around what I'm seeing from a macro standpoint, broader market standpoint, right? We'll talk about breath, sentiment, seasonality, all of it, general direction for risk assets. And then we jump into our favorite trade ideas. This is a long only uh, scan that we're talking about here based on insider filings, political filings, corporate executive filings, institutional form 13 filings. Really more of the same here today. Uh, but I am excited. We have a little bit of um, an interesting kind of macro debate uh, that we're going to hit at the top of this call before we get into some old, mostly old, and a handful of new trade ideas. Before we do that, <clears throat> nothing we discuss here constitutes any solicitation to buy or sell securities. It's all solely for informational purposes and never to be construed as investment advice. Thank you, everybody. First of all, uh, for more on our disclaimer, allstarcharts.com backslash terms. Thank you, everybody, for uh, hanging out and being patient. Curtis, Sambo, Mary, everybody's hanging out in the chat. Uh, had to get started a little bit late here today. I woke up. My ceiling was leaking. There's nothing more important in a home in the Florida Keys than your, your AC unit. And for whatever reason, mine just seems to have problems nonstop. Uh, so I had somebody here trying to figure out that whole situation. That is behind us now. So starting about 20 minutes late here, that's okay. Typically we'll start at one o'clock. Uh, so again, thanks everybody for your patience. Now, is it a bull market? Is it a bear market? What market? That conversation or the answer to that question really boils down to what is the market? What is your market, right? So JC and I have been going back and forth He's got a bullish tilt right now. I have a bit of a bearish tilt. And a lot of it comes down to what charts are we looking at? What charts are we talking about, right? So for the bulls, NASDAQ 100. At the index level, when you talk about the stock market, it's important to clarify if you're talking about the biggest and best stocks, which are very well represented by this index right here, the NASDAQ 100, or the smallest or the average or median stocks. I like the Russell 2000 for that. If you overlay it with something like the value line geometric, which shows you the median stock performance, uh, they look pretty damn close, almost identical. So I think the small cap index does a really good job of telling us what most stocks are doing. And boy, the outlook, the price structure could not be any different. This is the Russell resolving lower here flirting with fresh three-year lows. So if you're using that as your index, right, to illustrate the market, can't be a bull market, three-year lows, sounds like a bear market. We're talking about the biggest and best stocks, back to the NASDAQ now. This, to me, really looks like a top that doesn't want to be a top, right? So the NASDAQ, driven by stocks like Microsoft, Apple, NVIDIA, Amazon, Google, Meta, your market leaders. That's why it looks pretty good. I think 355 is the tactical level for the NASDAQ 100, even if that breaks and we go on to test those August highs. I have another uh, line drawn here at 335, the August highs. Not the end of the world. You see the 200-day moving average, you know, firmly uh, directing higher here, indicating that the trend is up for the NASDAQ 100. Momentum refusing to get oversold. Unlike the S&P 500, the Russell 2000, pretty much everything else. This is communications and technology. Why do they look so much like the NASDAQ 100, right? We have similar failed tops kind of materializing here, I think. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, the reason is because they're driven by all the same components, right? So communications up top in black. That's your meta and Google. Netflix. And then you got tech down here in blue. That's your Microsoft and Apple, NVIDIA. 
then we have small caps. Violating the most critical level we have to look at right now. 170, you could even draw this one really thick, <clears throat> 160 to 170. That's really uh, the polarity zone here. Lines up beautifully with these prior cycle highs from 2018, 2020, right? So this former resistance had turned into support one time, two times, three times, four, five times. Six time is not a charm. Looks like we're breaking now. Uh, I think Russell 2000 below 170 really just warrants a more cautious approach, right? When it comes to the broader market, uh, breadth and participation has been historically thin all year. It's only getting worse, not better. Just real quick, S&P 500, need to touch on this. Looks a lot better than the Russell 2000, but also a lot worse than the NASDAQ 100, right? This one's kind of stuck in the middle. Um, I have a lot of levels drawn here. Let's talk about them. First, we took out those August highs, which coincide with the 62% retracement of the uh, bear market drawdown from 2022, right? Violated that a few weeks ago. Went on to violate this shelf of highs from earlier in the year, around 418, 420. Overshot a little bit to two absolutely critical volume weighted average price lines which are converging here one anchored from the cycle lows from october of last year another one anchored from the all-time highs i for me that's really the last line of defense for the s p 500 call it 410 410 goes if those vwaps are violated that tells you sellers are very much in control and at at that point and under that scenario we have to start talking about Maybe an eventual retest of the lows from last year. Particularly in the context of the weakness we're seeing everywhere else. I think this is do or die time for the S&P. S&P digs in here, holds these VWAPs. You probably see the Russell digging in here, holding these range lows and rebounding. You probably see the strongest indexes absolutely um, making some quick moves higher completing failed tops, right? NASDAQ 100 back above 355 or S&P 500 breaks these VWAPs. Sellers are in clear control. Russell 2000 is breaking down from that range. These are probably actual tops and not failed tops. And that's where we're at right now. Big levels uh, really, really need to watch these levels closely and the price action of the coming days. Why? The Fed Day or FOMC announcement is often the catalyst for the next directional move, right? So I wouldn't be at all surprised if we finally get some sort of resolutions from these ranges, uh, whether they're failures or completed pattern patterns, right? We should know. And I think the Fed could be the catalyst that gets us to that sort of, you know, decision time from these charts. You can also say dollar index coiling in this, you know, tight bull flag right above a key level. Maybe that resolves today, tomorrow, Friday um, on the follow through of this Fed announcement, which we're going to have here in just 30 minutes. I think the announcement's at two and the presser starts at 2.30. So maybe we get some fireworks into the end of the day and even the end of the week, right? A lot of times that there's like an initial knee jerk reaction and then there's like a counter reaction the next day that might have follow through. Sometimes they get the first move wrong, I guess is what I'm saying. So be a little patient, but by Friday, we should really know if we are gonna get a move, what direction that move is in, hopefully get some resolutions um, and some clarity around these big levels like these VWAPs or those uh, highs from earlier in the year in the S&P from the 410, 420 level, right? Now, breath, a lot of talk about breath. Most stocks bottomed or stopped falling. Depends on what index, right? So the nicey here, new lows, three month new lows, six month new lows, and 12 month is close now. 12 month is pretty much an equal level, but earlier in October, when we made uh, that last low, most stocks stopped falling in the nicey, at least, right? Not seeing an expansion in new lows, at least from three month, six month lows, not seeing an expansion confirm the new lows at the index level. Okay, fine. That's the bull take. Here's the bear take. 
S&P 500, most important index in the world, in my opinion, you are getting an expansion in new lows, which is confirmation of the new lows at the index level, right? Across the board. This is 12-month lows in the S&P 500, 12-month lows in the S&P 400, 12-month lows in the S&P 600. So small caps, mid caps, large caps, all the S&P universes, confirmation uh, from market internals. In other words, confirmation in the sense of more stocks making uh, incremental new lows. Uh, if you look at it on a six-month time frame, this is six-month new lows, large, mid, small, in that order. Expansion from mids and smalls, not large caps, right? So it's really a mixed bag with internals, just like it's a mixed bag with the price action, the price structures at the index level. We have something like the Russell 2000, which looks like a bear market chart. And we have something like the NASDAQ 100, very much looks like a bull market chart. When we look beneath the surface at breath, you can paint it both ways right now, okay? Bottom line for me is breath is not great. And most stock charts look like charts that I don't want to be buying. Leadership, risk appetite. Starting to see that bear market defensiveness, even from these bond proxy groups. Here's staples on a relative basis, bouncing off a key level where they found support back in 2021 versus the broader market, right before the market turned lower, right, in 2022. A big sell-off at the index level. Look what staples were doing. So wouldn't this be a logical level level for them to reassert some leadership, start moving higher again? We're seeing it just over the past few weeks, but uh, in a pretty big way, right? Big move here. At the same time, how can I talk about risk appetite right now and not mention Bitcoin absolutely ripping for the past few weeks? Bitcoin breaking out above that 30,000 level that we've been watching for so long, really, really completing and confirming the completion of this reversal pattern. The trend is undeniably higher in Bitcoin right now. Not really the price action you would expect to see in a bear market or a defensively toned environment. So again, from a risk appetite perspective, mixed messages. What do we do when we have all these mixed messages? Messy price action, some stocks good, some stocks terrible. We do what we always do, focus on the leaders. Focus on the pockets of strength, right? Lean on the stocks that have been working. Lean on the groups that have been working. Even more important today than a normal market environment because breath is so thin. Can't just go out and buy anything. Definitely don't want to do that. You want to be very selective and picky uh, about your long positions right now. Any new longs, that's for sure. NVIDIA is one name that very much gets my blessing. Here it is. I have a big circle drawn from this gap up after Q1. Just been digesting ever since, right? That was back in May after the Q1 earnings report. You had the Q2 earnings report ported right here, right? At the top of the range. We're just chopping around, consolidating in the context of a beautiful uptrend. Completed uh, base here, got the gap high. I think if you're really looking to jump an entry here and get into this one, you can bet on this being a failed top and use this 400 level. We're pretty much there now for an entry. You get confirmation at about 500, which lines up pretty closely with our price target here, 475, which is already hit. So I think you could buy this neckline here, bet on this being a failed top, 400. Risk is very well defined. If you're wrong, um, you're probably going to find out very quickly and lose very little. So trading right around like 400 and change here today. Or you could be more patient, enter around 475, right? Or even 500 if you want that ultimate confirmation. Wait for a new all-time high. Uh, secondary price target, 700 and change. NVIDIA is one that continues to look as good as anything. Google. If you missed it and wanted to be in Google, been one of the stronger stocks all year. Uh, big gap down following a disappointing earnings report. I guess investors were a little bit bummed about the cloud performance and guide. Seems to be the case with a lot of stocks this earnings season. Disappointing guidance, right? Even some stocks are beating, beating top, beating bottom. But investors are looking through to the guide, not loving it. And the stock is falling. Uh, so Google... 
Give them buyers another chance to get in. I think you could use 125 as a buy on strength entry now. That gap probably gets filled and Google continues its ascent upwards. Meta, sticking with the communications, large cap communications theme now. Meta's got just a really clean level here around 290, which is the range lows. We are trading at about... Meta's been such a strong name. Trading about 305 today. So uh, you could risk very little to get into this one uh, with a stop at about 290 and a price target about 385. Adobe, use this 62% retracement. Again, Adobe, beautiful run off the lows, really, you know, starting in April and just nice tight consolidation here. Got the 62%. And you could do this in a number of ways. You could use the pivot highs to come in closer to like 570. Or you can just use the 62%, 537, right? But again, you have up and then sideways, a little bit of digestion. I think we go up again, eventually get a new leg that takes us to 700 in Adobe. And again, I know we've talked about this, but just want to point out, why do we love uh, the CFO filings? Because they're just the best at this. They know what the street is expecting. They know what the numbers are. They know if the street is going to like the numbers. They know how the numbers are going to look at next quarter. Right, so the Adobe CFO with a boss move last year, right around this time last year, literally bought the lows in his own stock uh, and a material amount too, about a million dollars worth. He's just about doubled his money by now in a year's time. So golf clap for the Adobe CFO. Love to see it. Uh, this is why we pay so much attention or such close attention to these CFO filings. So again, Adobe, 537, target 700. CrowdStrike, C-R-W-D. This is a cyber name. I think we've got a pretty clean level here at the 38% retracement. 170. Also those pivot highs that we're kind of retesting. Just a steady stair step, stair step higher over the past few quarters. Uh, I think CrowdStrike above 170, long first stop 220, and then eventually back to those all-time highs just south of 300. Uber. Uh, JC pointed out today, I keep on grouping Uber into mega cap tech because I think it is a mega cap one day and it's definitely a tech stock. Uh, so Uber really just becoming one of the great American brands, in my opinion. Uh, you know, a lot of us just use this thing constantly, whether it's Uber Eats for delivery or getting rides. Uh, I think that they have a tremendous moat. And they just own this space right now. Lyft has been struggling and I think we'll keep struggling. Uh, so Uber above 47, this is buy on strength here, but the base is completed. The trend is up. It's only a matter of time until you see new all-time highs from Uber. Close to 100 billion in market cap. So this is one of the big boys for sure. And I think it only gets bigger. I think Uber's a very exciting stock for the long term. 47 is a nice level to enter. And the CEO was the forum four buyer here just last year. Love to see that. CEO coming in, buying $5 million worth of stock right around the lows last year. Good stuff. Vertex Inc., V-E-R-X. This is another software stock. V-E-R-X, completed base. This one just came public back in 2020 after a massive drawdown. Uh, it looks like it's now completing a base, climbing up the right-hand side. And I think we're heading back to those old all-time highs around 40 bucks. So 23 as a risk level, really clear, well-tested level there. Price target 40. Simma Bay Therapeutics. Simma Bay. I don't know. Perceptive advisors, passive investor in this one. They own a 5.6% stake. Filed that earlier this year. Just a massive base, right? Five-year base, taking out those 2018 highs around 15 and change. I think it'd be long above, call it 1570, target 2460. We'll do a couple energy. I think energy needs time. Uh, still in a range. Crude oil struggling. Typically, you get a solid wartime bid from crude oil and energy futures. Really just not seeing it. Um, so again, I, I would just be patient with energy. I think... This is, you know, a, a new bull market for energy stocks and commodity stocks more broadly. But I think we need to be really patient with that thesis. So TTE is one way to play it. They pay you a nice dividend. 
international exposure. There's one of the larger operators overseas, uh, France-based, I believe. 65 is that level. Those are the 2018 highs. We're above 65, running back to those old all-time highs uh, north of 90, 91.50. That is Total Energies. Magellan Midstream, again, typically not, you know, the biggest fan of these MLPs. I hate K1s, but God, the, the stocks offer fat dividend yields. I think they should have no problem servicing those yields and even raising them in the future. And the charts look great. So you're going to get the capital appreciation as well. MMP is one way uh, to play that. This is a great vehicle. One of the larger names in the MLP space. We're above 67.50, long all day, price target 95. And let's check what the yield is. Because I know it's juicy. Magellan Midstream. Virginia Fox, she's coming up a lot, huh? I am having trouble. Yeah, guys. All right. Sorry for the choppy internet, guys. Uh, Gene, just let me know. We will move. We will move swiftly through the rest of these. Then, uh, Uranium Energy Corp. UEC. Listen, we love uranium. I think this is a absolute mega trend. The beginning of a new secular bull market. Any and all dips in uranium stocks should be bought until further notice. Uh, UEC, on the other hand is one that you probably have to buy on strength at this point. I think you get that monster base breakout above 650, 665 shown here. Really the pivot highs from last year. Above there, I, who knows how high this one goes, right? So I love this. I think it's one of the better vehicles. Uh, it is showing significant relative strength amongst its peers over the short term. Like UEC a lot, I think you do want to be a little bit patient here, though. Buy on strength above 665. Centris Energy Corp is another one, LEU. Really nice just textbook retest here. These pivot highs around 50, 51. Uh, I think you could enter right here right now in LEU, play it back to those uh, highs from 2021 around 89. Donnelly Financial, DFIN. This is like financial compliance software or something, asset management stuff. DFIN, uh, Simcoe Capital Management is an activist in this name with a 13... 13% stake. Monster base breakout. Uh, this one looks as good as any stock out there right now. If we're above 52 and a quarter, we like it long with the target about 70. First cash holdings. Gold. Pawn shop business. Interesting stock. Form 4 filed by the president. Last year for about a million dollars. If we're above 107, I like first cash long with the target of 141. New holdings, NU. Listen, Tommy Tuberville's in this one. He uh, He's on top of, of, of a lot of these uh, stranger trends. Really interesting, you know, to track his moves, whether it's commodity stocks or energy stocks. He's always buying weird stuff. New holdings is like some Brazilian digital bank that is just seeing ridiculous growth. It almost looks like one of those situations where it's like too good to be true. I don't fully understand what they do, but other banks are really struggling. These guys are absolutely killing it. Either they, you know, figured out a new way to make money in banking uh, or this one, I think we want to be careful around. But for now, uh, it does look good. 830, if you want exposure to this uh, freakishly strong bank, 830, price target of 1220 and new holdings. That's ticker symbol NU. Again, Kind of on the fence about that one. Parson Corp, PSN. Uh, already hit one price target. This is one that we talked about a lot earlier in the year. Ramped up. First price target hit, and I think it's getting ready to go again. I think it's re-breaking out here today. Yeah, look at today's candle. Up 8.5% on earnings. This has just been a ridiculously strong stock uh, for a very long time now. Even through the bear market, right? In 2022, this, this thing was moving higher. So... Uh, if we're above 58, keep it long. Next next stop, 78.50. And again, who's the buyer in this one? The CFO. When did he buy? March of 2022. 
When did the stock bottom? February of 2022, right here. So just over and over and over again, these CFOs are so good at what they do. Love seeing that. It was a big buy too, 1.3 million. Uh, how much money has he made so far? Just a little back of the napkin stuff. We're trading about 60 today. He was in around 30, another double. So another million dollar trade for a CFO. Micro strategy, right? We talked about Bitcoin, the strength in Bitcoin. Bitcoin looks as tradable on the long side as anything these days. Uh, high and tight flag. Let's see what it's doing today. It looked like it was kind of melting a little bit earlier in the day. Nope, hanging in there, dojiing, uh, showing a little bit of indecision. It's a beautiful flag coming off, you know, just a major ramp up to uh, fresh 52-week highs. I think Bitcoin uh, probably has another leg higher in its future. What are some equity market vehicles we can use to profit off of that trend? MicroStrategy is as good as any, right? This is a leveraged leveraged spot Bitcoin ETF. We had our entry drawn around 350 uh, you know, earlier this year and last year on this one. That's kind of where we had the base breaking out. I think you could use 460 now and buy this one on strength. Listen, it, it tracks the price of Bitcoin as well as anything out there. Trading around 418, 420 today. If it's going to go, you're going to see 460 really quick. Uh, and then we want to be out around 885, really get you back more or less to those old highs. 460, uh, buy on strength, target 885. The director and chief technology officer were the insiders in this one. Coinbase is another one. It's not going to give you as strong of a correlation to the price of Bitcoin itself, right? This is more of a crypto play than it is a Bitcoin play, while MicroStrategy is very much a Bitcoin play more than it is a crypto play, right? They own, they hold Bitcoin on their balance sheet and 90, 95% of their P&L in any given quarter is from the unrealized gains and losses on those Bitcoin positions. Coinbase, on the other hand, is making money off of fees, um, acting as an exchange and a broker for the broader crypto market, not just Bitcoin. So of course it will do well if and when Bitcoin does well, but it's really the whole broader crypto market I think Coinbase above 80, maybe, you know, I have my, my line drawn closer to like 84, 85. You also have the VWAP from the July highs coming in right around 83. So I, I, I would say if you want to jump it 80, if you want some confirmation, use 84. Either way, we could run this one back to those July highs around 115. That would make for a really nice trade. Keep in mind, though, they have earnings coming out here, I think tomorrow morning. So maybe be patient, wait for the earnings reaction, uh, and then enter if you get that strength, right? So Coinbase above 80, 84-ish, price target 115. And then once we get to 115, this base is completed, and we can start talking about Coinbase moving much higher uh, in the future. And I do think I do think Coinbase is a great stock uh, for the long term. If crypto survives, Coinbase thrives. Uh, that has been my thesis uh, for the stock, and I continue to believe that. The co-founder... Fred Ersam, I believe it was, made a monster purchase uh, in this one earlier this year. So that's it, guys. Do we have any questions? Let me check the chat here real quick. Let's go. So hot. Yeah, love it. Uh, the AV WAP is what I'm watching. Cool. Me too. Steve, you mentioned you went long Google in a longer term account on the pullback. Uh, yeah, so I have a longer term account, my IRA, where I'm more or less trying to buy great companies at solid entries and not worry too much, right? So JC was like, where's your stop on that? Not really thinking about that, right? If the market were to really turn ugly here, I was like, okay, I want to raise cash. Then I would go through my IRA and, and selectively kind of prune, trim the weeds. You know, you want to water the, water the flowers and trim the weeds kind of a thing. But I buy these stocks with a long-term vision. I don't have a stop and I don't have a time frame. I'm typically looking for mega trends and stocks that I really like, products that I use, um, companies that I believe in, good management, leadership, right? Coinbase is one of those names too that I'm holding longer term. I love Brian Armstrong. I think he's doing a tremendous job running that company and keeping them, uh, you know, on the cutting edge of everything new that's going on in crypto. Uber is another one I have in the longer term account. I just, I can't say enough good things about Uber, the way the companies run, how quickly they were able to turn profitable. Um, I think Uber is going to be, like I said, a mega cap growth stock that we're talking about 
in the same breath as NVIDIA, Meta, Google, Netflix in the future? Um, I hope that answered your question, Curtis. IRA is probably managed differently than standard broker. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, with longer term accounts, it's I'm buying weakness more often, right? Than I am in my trading account. My trading account, I'm almost always buying strength, right? Because trades, you want them to be working right away, right? Buying weakness in the trade, ugh. if you have a short time frame, not the best strategy, right? But in the longer term account, yeah, I'll buy weakness in stocks that I love and just wish I had more exposure to, right? These big trends. Um, and Google's absolutely that. I basically came to the conclusion this year that I don't own enough of the best stocks, whether it's Microsoft, Apple, Google, NVIDIA. NVIDIA is another one I'll just throw out there since we're having this conversation. I see NVIDIA at 400 and I'm thinking to myself, I don't know if it ever sees anything you know, below 400. I think there are so many eager buyers on the sidelines wishing that they were in NVIDIA, hearing about NVIDIA, hearing about AI all year. They're just dying to jump in and support this stock. So I might be in that one by the end of the day too, right? But this is more just a strategy for me where I say, okay, I own a bunch of coal and energy and uranium uh, and nichier stuff, but I don't own enough of the best stocks for my long-term account, right? So that I'm kind of um, trying to change that slowly. So Google gets hit on earnings. Trend is still higher, right? If we flip to the Google chart, sure, I'm happy to buy weakness in something that looks like this, right? Here it is. 200-day moving average, firmly sloped higher, telling us the trend is up. The base has been completed for a while now by weakness in this, something like this all day, right? Um, so it's it's important to know, or it's important to know your time frame before you get in, right? Because this is a great question from Curtis. I treat my entries and my risk management very differently in my long-term account than I do in my trading account, right? So before you enter a trade, you have to know, is this one I'm tucking away? I want to, you know, want to hold for a long, 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 long time. Or is this one I need to move from quick and I got to be super tactical about it and manage that risk tight. And we have a Fed day today. If the market rolls over, I got to be out. Very different. So, and I think everybody should do both, right? Uh, I would never give the advice to only trade, right? I think it's so important to have a long-term account too. All right. Thanks everybody for joining. As always, this is fun. 155 here. So guys, in five minutes, J-Pal is going to come on and maybe rock the market. I'm kidding. Uh, but maybe maybe we will. Maybe we'll see some fireworks. For me, I just want to see these big levels. Uh, I want to see a, a direction taken off of these big levels. Give us some more clarity as to what we're likely looking at uh, heading into the end of the year here, right? Do we go lower? Does this correction worsen? Or do we get some sort of year-end rally that so many of us have been waiting for? Uh, I think we know soon. So thank you guys as always. Uh, any questions, concerns, comments, want to say hi, info at allstarcharts.com. Otherwise, see you every morning on the morning show at 8.30 to 10. And we'll see you here next week, same time, same place for the Hot Corner Live Strategy Session.